Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Tribe of Leaders podcast. I'm your host, Emmy Kirshner. And on today's show, I am so super excited. This is something that I've been wanting to do for months. And my oldest kid and I finally had the time to sit down and chat about what it was like for him growing up with me as an entrepreneur, my parenting style, and how that has impacted his life and the decisions that he's made. I think you're going to love it. And if you do, do me a favor and share this with your friends and also give us a rating and a review on iTunes so that you can help us be found. My name is Emmy Kirshner. I'm a serial entrepreneur and investor. The one thing that I get asked all the time is, how do you achieve success in business and make an impact? In each episode of the Tribe of Leaders podcast, you'll hear from entrepreneurs and visionaries who share how their leadership has changed not only their lives, but the lives of everybody around them. Hey, everybody. On today's show, I have, and we're going to do something a little bit different here. I have my oldest son, Brian Oliver, with me. Hello. And I wanted to share um, what it's like from his perspective of growing up with an entrepreneur because I know that I have experienced, and I presume that many of you have too, and even if you don't have your own business and you're listening, that balance of am I spending enough time with my kids and leading them the way that I want to, um, and am I spending enough time you know, in my, my work building this business, and that kind of balance of I'm never really present in either place because I'm concerned that... Um, you know, while I'm working that, oh, I should be doing, you know, whatever with my kids and then vice versa. And I know there've been times when I've been at the football game and answering emails or typing notes about something that just popped into my head and the ongoing squirrel brain of the entrepreneur. But I think, and Brian, tell me what your thoughts are. Um, I think that it's also given you a great opportunity to explore any possibility and opportunity in a way that makes you a little bit more open-minded because you've seen me try many different things and I've had many different businesses over the years. So what do you, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Uh, I would say one of the main things is that seeing your experiences uh, made me realize that I shouldn't be afraid to fail um, and that failure isn't the end all be all. Um, just because, you know, you go through some uh, adversity or whatever, there's always a way to get around it. Um, and I think that was one of the main things that you helped me learn, uh, when I was growing up and that seeing your experiences, um, you know, starting even back as far as with, uh, the Zook house and, uh, you wanted to open the restaurant and everything. Um, I think that was like sort of the start of everything. Mm-hmm. That was, after that, you started getting more into the coaching and, right. um, and, and all that. Uh, and let me just pause for a second and, inter- and share with everybody too. For those of you who don't know, you know, if you're listening for the first time, um, I have had a personal chef business. I've been a caterer. Uh, what Brian's referring to with the Zook House is um, an 18-month project to start a restaurant that I, I essentially walked away from. Um, after having, you know, investors and a bank loan and a 40, 50 page business plan, um, just because we couldn't get the the property in a deal the way I wanted it to be, um, that was going to be mutually beneficial and then kind of moved into the coaching. But I think, I mean, that was over 10 years now. So, mm. you know, you're 21. That's been that long. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's so, crazy. Right. Yeah. Like, that was 2009. So it was 10 years ago. Yeah, 10 years. So, I mean, you were 11. Mm-hmm. Like, that's... I was a little guy. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, like, what were your thoughts? Because I, I missed some, you know, some baseball games because I was really intent on getting this thing done. And, you yeah. know, do you feel like I wasn't present or there with you? No, I don't think so. I think because you always... Uh, I felt like you always made the effort... <laughs> Uh, you, you know, maybe you weren't there for the baseball game or whatever, but, um, you always made the effort in other aspects of life, um, whether it was with school or, you know, just girl stuff, personal stuff, whatever it was. Uh, if I came to you, you would always be there for me and we could just talk about whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were always just, 
in a way like friends, you know, uh, I never felt like I was scared to like go talk to you about something or anything like that. Um, you always made me feel really comfortable and accepted. And yeah, I, I really appreciated that. So uh, there was something else I wanted to, to mention. Oh, it was um, you walking away from the deal with the Zook house. It was, that also helped me realize um, that I should be very I guess, particular, you know, like you were like, nah, I, I, I want it to be exactly the way I want it to be. You know, like I, I have my vision. I want my vision to be like completed. And mm-hmm. I think that, that has impacted me a lot because um, basically I will continue to push for whatever it is that I want, mm-hmm. you know, like I'm, not going to stop. I'm always going to keep going and just keep persevering until my vision is completed. Um, so I think, yeah, that, that would be like one of the main takeaways that I had, especially right. from like that situation. Thank you for sharing that. Cause I think that's one of the things too, that's really hard as an entrepreneur where you've got this vision and, and there's places where mm-hmm. you have to compromise, yeah. right? Like of life course. is full of compromise but when you're compromising what the vision is at some of the higher levels, right? Like that's, that's where it starts to feel not good. Yeah. It's like, it's not even really the same thing anymore. Yeah. You know? And so. other people don't really have to believe in that or, you know, I guess agree with whatever it is your vision is, but it's really important for you to stay true to, you know, what your long-term exactly. outcome and goal mm-hmm. is. Yeah. And, and, I mean, you have a business now, so tell everybody, you know, what it is that you're doing and, you know, how you're starting to grow, um, too, because this is what I love and I think has been really cool for me is to see both you um, and your brother be able to be like, I want to, this is the thing I love and this is how I'm going to make it work. Yeah. Uh, so I am a music producer. I've been making music since I was like, around. I started learning to use GarageBand uh, when I was 12 and then sort of slowly started learning. And uh, about f- maybe four years ago, I started taking it more seriously. Um, and well, here I am today. So I um, offer beats online um, and I work with other artists to uh, create music. And um, I help provide other producers with uh, different samples and sounds and stuff like that uh, help them expand their musical libraries in a sense. Uh, and what type of music do you create? Uh, it sort of varies, but mainly like hip hop, uh, R and B, some like lo-fi stuff sometimes, but like mainly in that like kind of hip hop genre. Yeah. But you know, it could go from like some crazy, like really aggressive beat to like something super chill, just like background. You know? Okay. Um, so. And why, like, why is this your thing? That's a good, <laughs> well, uh, I just like, what's your music. vision? Yeah. Yeah. I just love music and I want to share my sound with everyone else. I think like, I want to, I, I want to hear, I want to share what I hear and like, the way that I listen to things because I, I think I, I, I'll, I'll listen to a song and I, I think I listen to it a little bit differently than everyone else. Maybe that's just some like, you know, cliche or whatever, but um, I, I really do think that like I'll, I'll listen to it and I'll get something different out of it. And I'll, I just want to get what I take out of uh, that music. And I, I want to share that with everyone else and, and kind of show the world, I guess. Right. So what emotion do you want them to feel? Okay. Or emotions, because yeah. your, your music's kind of broad. Uh, well, that's really what it is. Is I, I, I want them to experience emotions when they listen to music. Right. So it might, it, it, it'll depend on what, you know, music is. If it's something more relaxed or whatever. I want it to be like the most intense, best version of that relaxation. Right. So, um, Yeah. Basically, okay. I just want to get like I, I I want it to portray a certain feeling or like vibe or sound the mm-hmm. best that I can, uh, and that's my my like my vision. That's my dream right there. 
relaxed to be able to do that. But I think that's awesome. But how has, I guess, my successes, my failures um, created opportunity for you to really make the stand of this is what I want to do? Mm. Like, even though it's a really challenging industry, you're not daunted by that. Oh, yeah. No. Well, my thing is I want to be happy. Right. Right. Uh, I would rather be broke, not have any money, live on the streets, whatever, but be happy than be rich and be unhappy. And I think that you helped me realize that a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, Mostly because since you've had your own business, um, I think you've been able to be more happy than like a lot of other people are. And I've talked to a lot of other people that have jobs or whatever. And they're just like, ah, oh, I hate my job, everything like that. Right. They're like, doing the grind. Yeah. And you've always had, you, you've always said, oh, man, I'm super busy. Like I have stuff to do. I, you know, and you, maybe you're stressed out about it, but it's not a bad thing. Right. It's not like you like hate doing it. You always have loved doing whatever it is that you're doing. You love helping people. You want to, um, give them the best experience that you can. And, um, I think that really made me realize that, you know, I think that happiness is the most important thing uh, in life really. So yeah, basically I, it just helped me realize that happiness. Okay. So it really is your priority is, is fulfilling the happiness mm-hmm. so that you can, create experiences for other people. Exactly. And yeah. not that the money piece isn't, and I'm kind of air quoting. It's not like I don't want to make any money. Right. It's not that. It's, it's not that. It's that really being grounded in this is what your purpose and your passion yes. is. Yeah, exactly. Before the I need to like make a ton of money, mm-hmm. like that's going to come. Yes. Okay. Very cool. I want to circle back because we were talking before we started recording um, about – how my parenting style is a little bit different. And you were saying, um, you were saying that like when you talk to me, it's different than when you talk to other adults. And yeah. I mean, granted on your mom. So That's there's that, <laughs> that, there's that yeah. relationship, but yeah. uh, explain that a little bit too. And because I think this is what really was different um, for me, at least and how I parented both you and Matthew uh, particularly as a single mom. Yeah. Well, I, th- I think I had mentioned this a little bit earlier. It's like more like we were friends. Like I never felt like I couldn't go talk to you. Um, and whenever we did have a conversation, I felt like you really listened to what I said. A lot of other adults, even now, um, I, I'll talk to them. And it's like they really aren't quite listening to what I'm saying. Like maybe they're just not valuing uh, what it is. And maybe that's just because I'm 20 years old and I understand that. That's fine. I'm not going to take it too personally. Well, yeah. I mean, your, your experience level is different than somebody yeah, who's exactly, which I, yeah. which I understand. So, but no matter what it is, I could come to you and be like, you know, I'm, I, I really think this about whatever it is. Right. And you're like, Oh, that's an interesting idea. And then we could have a whole conversation about it. Whereas like, if I did that with somebody else, they'd be like, what? Like, I don't like, go away. Like, <laughs> so yeah, I, I think that having that, um, in our relationship, uh, really impacted me. Mm-hmm. Um, and has really made me who I am today because you were just always there to talk about whatever it was. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. And what I wanted both of you to be heard, but part of what I did very intentionally, um, was and I refer to it as a, a democratic dictatorship because mm-hmm. uh, I've talked to other people about it where we made decisions together. Like all three of us made decisions about where we were going on vacation, what we wanted to experience with obviously me as the parent being the final say. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that really gave me a sense of that you were getting what you needed and what you wanted instead of me just deciding that we were going to go do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Um, and it, it also, I mean, we talked about, I think every aspect of, you know, just daily life from that vantage point. Yeah. So it did give you a place to be heard 
and and have an opinion that mattered. Mm-hmm. Um, I think differently than than not hearing you than yeah. just you know me being in an adult world. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, um, how do you use that now? Mm. Well, I mean, I don't know. I still talk to you all the time. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, you know, I just try to try to reach out to you. I guess I'm. Uh, if if uh, sometimes I'll save like a conversation, you know, like uh, I'll be like, ah, oh, this is like uh, this interesting thought I, I just had. I'm gonna talk to Em about this one because she'll like we'll have like a really great conversation about it, right? Or whatever, or she'll have like a really interesting perspective. And sometimes I'll even like use it as a way to like sort of like bounce ideas off of, you know, so it'll be like, like, oh, I wonder what I will think about this. And it'll help me come up with, or just like look at things differently, I mm-hmm. guess, you know? What do you see? Cause you live with three other guys now, yeah. right? What do you see as being different or similar for that matter, like between where you're at and where they're at, because they're in college and you're yeah. not right now well, and you're pursuing kind of your stuff, but they're still pursuing their interests. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think they have, they definitely have a, they're not as close with their parents, I would say. And I could be wrong, but uh, it's like they have more of like a wall in between them and their parents, you know, like they keep more stuff in their parents. Like they might not share as much. Whereas like, I literally will tell you everything. Like, there's not much that you don't know. About right. Me. Like it, it's just like silly things. Like, but I'm not judging either. Yeah, exactly. And I, I think one of the things that particularly with the, the democratic dictatorship, yeah, yeah. Um, some of it was the openness mm-hmm. of, of having some of those conversations just led to the, like, I'd rather know that you were doing something stupid so that I can guide you through it 100%. and fail, like yeah. allow you to fail so that you can have the learning experience. Mm-hmm. Then you going and doing the stupid things that teenagers are going to do in general. Yeah. Um, and then we can talk about it. So I wasn't judging Yeah. or at least trying not to. I'm sure there's been moments where we do it. All the right. Time, you know? Yeah. No, no. I, I think that that was one of the like main, I guess, differences. But also, uh, obviously, I you know I'm not in school or anything, so their parents are much more. You know, you need to be in college. You need to be in college. You need to be in college. And you were like, you know what? Like, if you don't want to, that's fine. You got to figure it out. But like, I'm not going to make you. I'm not going to like pressure you into that. And I, was, I really appreciated that because I've never been a school guy. Haven't liked it since I was little. I, I mean, I think I, you know, you turn and get me on the bus. I remember I was like it was kicking, kicking and screaming. <laughs> oh my God. Know, like kindergarten. Yeah. Kindergarten. It was like an hour to get Brian on the bus. <laughs> yeah. Never liked it. Just not my thing. No, and you, it's not like you don't love learning. Like you oh, no, teach no. yourself all sorts of stuff. I taught myself how to make music. Right. Uh, on YouTube. Well, and you taught yourself how to play chess. And play chess. I remember, you know, you were watching physics videos on YouTube um, mm-hmm. to kind yeah. of offset Theory one of the of teachers relativity. that you had. Yeah. Theory of relativity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I mean, learning for you can up. be anything. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. And not that, I mean, maybe later you'll want to go to school. Maybe you won't. Either way is good. Yeah. Uh, maybe. I don't know. But I think that having you be supportive of that was like a really big deal for me. And I think that that's a major difference between me and some of my, my roommates slash people my age okay. in general. So, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to ask you some questions. I was going to say, let's, let's turn the tables. Let's do it. Yeah. Um, so what do you think the hardest thing about raising us was as an entrepreneur? I think it's really, it's what I started off with was, am I doing enough? Mm -hmm. Right. And, and not so much now. What's that? I think all parents wonder that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And what's the right balance? Because there's particularly in the beginning, Mm -hmm. there were times when it was like, all right, here's dinner. I'm going to go work on my website. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and it's, there's times when I know I haven't been as present as, as 
I wanted to be. Um, you were always aware of it, though, I think. You know, like, it wasn't like you were, like, uh, you were always like, am I doing this? You were always kind of keeping an eye on it. So if it was like, oh, I know I haven't, you know, been with the kids or whatever, so you know what, this weekend I'm just going to spend some time. Right. So. I think we've had a, an enormous amount of quality time because mm-hmm. despite the hours that I've worked, despite missing some games, I still was there most of the time. Yeah. And, like, you know, it's, and I don't think having the 100% attendance ratio is what really it's, matters it's the the time that we're together is really important i don't even think it's a good thing like i think sometimes you need to have some separation yeah you know? i know i mean while matthew was playing football there were times where he was like i don't want you to come i just want to go do my thing mm-hmm. like i don't need you hovering around me 100%. um you know and it's my intention too when i when i was in the restaurant phase was that i really wanted you to see that you could do anything you wanted mm-hmm. and Every time I failed, and every time I continue to fail now, even though it's, I'm so like shifted into it's just learning experience. Where's the opportunity? Um, I was like, I want, I want to see my, you know, my kids see me succeed because I want them to succeed Mm -hmm. too. But I think, as you said, it's been, it's also given you the the perseverance and the the drive to keep going. Yeah, definitely. but I think definitely the balance is the biggest, the biggest thing. Yeah. Do you think that we actually, like, if you didn't have kids, would it have been easier to have been an entrepreneur? Or well, do you think that having us, well, I'll just let you answer. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, from a top level perspective, yeah, because there's two less people in my life that I'm I'm not responsible for, right? Mm-hmm. So it's easier just to focus on the one thing. And I think that's for anybody. Um, I think what being a single mom, wanting to be with you, not putting you in daycare ever, um, like one of the things that it really forced me to create is what I teach now with the whole, like, let life be fluid and and have flow in it where you know on any given day you're focused on one piece of your life more than than another and not that I wasn't stressed out at times or like you know exhausted because that was that was definitely the case but I also think we had a ton of fun and everything just moved together um in a way that worked for us right like it's yeah. You know, things weren't just nine to five. You know, I I could be the volunteer mom and do my business. Mm-hmm. So I found a way to make that kind of work for us. Um, and particularly as I got better at it, you know, I think there was there was more flow, for lack of a better term. But uh, with like, this is just how things are going on any given day. Mm-hmm. And... I hope that's what more people will start to incorporate and just let go of the like perfectly pieces of you know, portion pieces of pie because life isn't like that. Yeah. Um, and it gives you the opportunity too to really step in and be supportive. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one of the things that's meant the most for me is those conversations that we've had. And I don't know if you remember, but when business wasn't going well, mm-hmm. Or I was really frustrated about something. We were sitting around the dinner table. It's been more than once where I'm like, I should get a job. And you and Matthew have been my like my biggest supporters. Yeah. I was always like, no, you're yeah. not going to like that. It's, no. not gonna, it's not a good idea. I think it's a good idea. It's not a good idea. You're not going to be happy. That's what matters is the happiness, right. like we said. So, yeah. Um, so... Like, like we had said a little bit earlier, like I, I think I was around 11 when you kind of really started with your more entrepreneurial journey. So do you think that having to raise kids, um, at least up until that point, actually helped prepare you for uh, your journey into entrepreneurship and having your own business? Would you say that there was lessons? Like, and what would some of those lessons be? Yeah. Um, it's funny because I think you, both you and Matthew have taught me more about life and business than even some of the most amazing coaches that I've had. Really? Yeah. Um, and that's that's, (laughs) because you're brilliant. Yeah. Um, and not that I haven't had great coaches and learned a lot or from 
just training I've done or whatever, but it's, I think kids are so innately in touch with themselves that when adults allow them to be who they truly are, and that's one of the things that's been really cool about both you and Matthew is that you're so different from each other. So whatever I had figured out that worked for you, you know, totally did not work for Matthew. Like he, I had to figure out a whole different way. Yeah. And then I, it got to a point where I was like, how do I intentionally um, create experiences and lead in a way that does help you grow to be the best person that you can possibly be and, and really build your assets, but also build your, 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 your weaknesses. Mm -hmm. you know, how do you close that gap? And from the perspective of hiring people and growing a team from really looking at, you know, who is my, my customer and who am I selling to and how am I creating those sales, having that difference in the back of my head and knowing that, you know, how I speak to one person isn't how I'm going to relate to another person um, has been fantastic. Mm. And then, I mean, I, I write about some of our experiences um, I have on the blog or newsletters or whatever. And those are the ones that I get the most feedback from. Yeah. So, yeah, like there's just things that as adults, I think people and, and Matthew selling, this is one of the story I've told over and over again, which just <laughs> cracks me up, but it's that first year he played football and he was a camp counselor oh, yeah. and he had those, the gold cards and he, everybody else had two weeks to sell them. Matthew had like 48 hours or 24 hours or whatever. And he just took him to camp and like, was like, Hey, buy a gold card. Yeah. And non sales people and adults get all up in their head about, you know, am I good enough to do this? Am I offering it to the right people? You know, insert whatever the hesitation and am I being too pushy? And Matthew was, I think he's in high school. So he was probably 14 or 15 was just like, I just got to go do this thing. Yeah. And he literally sold like 25 cards in and they're how much a piece? They were 15, $20 a piece. So it's not like, you know, five bucks or a couple of dollars. Like it's kind of difficult to sell well, them sometimes. Yeah. Not everybody's going to want one. Exactly. But he took them to camp and got rid of them all that morning. And I was starting to be like, Oh my God, we've got to do this. And he's like, I sold them all. <laughs> yeah. I remember when he came home, he was like, yeah, I sold them all. And we were both like, wait, what? <laughs> and there were other kids on his team who had had the two weeks and didn't sell them all. Uh -huh. And, and like, that's fine. It's just like some of those experiences I think are really cool because they're, they're so helpful for me in like, let go of the story that's in your head. Yeah. Just go make the magic. Definitely. Yeah. So yeah, you, you're both an inspiration. Well, I'm glad. Yeah. Very glad. <sighs> what would you do differently? What would I do differently? Yeah. For what? In what aspect? Like when, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Which time? Any time. Pick a time. Okay, what would you, What do you wish was different growing up? Growing up? Okay. Uh, really not much. I'm, I mean, we had fun. I'd like, yeah, I think I had a good child. Less beach probably for you. <laughs> yeah, maybe a few more like, you know, mountainy or some sort of other vacations. But I, I like the beach too. It's not that bad. It's just. You guys really like the beach. And I'm like, I like the beach. For about okay. two hours. Yeah. Two hours. Chilling. You're like, I literally sit there all day. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I don't really think there's that much. Uh, I, I think we had a great relationship. And I think that uh, every one of my experiences that I had growing up has made me who I am today. And has taught me a lot. Mm-hmm. So I don't really think I would want to change that at all because I like who I am. So That's awesome. What's yeah. your big vision at, like out, outside of the music piece yeah. or including the music piece? But well, music's definitely a big part of it. Right. I mean, that's your, we already established your kind of it's your like passion and purpose, passion. but where do you see yourself in five years? In five years? Wow. Hopefully I'll be working with some of the, the top artists and music world uh i have a, a lot of ideas that i i, I want to change the way we even release music mm -hmm. um and 
how we listen to music. Uh, I think people don't necessarily respect the producers as much as they should. Um, a lot of people don't really know, like, you know, especially in like hip hop music, uh, they rapper or whatever does very small amount of the work. You know, really, it's the producer, right. and a lot of times it's the producer who is like creating that. You know, uh, I would think that so. like most people really don't know how music is made. Oh no! Most people don't understand that it's on a computer. But I'm like, yeah, I make music on a computer, and they're like, wait, what? Like, don't you need instruments? And it's like, well, yes, but really, like, pretty much any track you listen to on the radio today is made on a computer with like digital sounds, right? Um, but uh, even like, uh, I have an idea where you can take like some very well-produced beats and stuff like that and make it a whole album um, with just that and have it be more of like an experience listening to it, right? Right. Um, so that's like one of my main ideas. Uh, and, and I want to bring that into uh, our culture and bring that into um, the way that we in the U.S. or even the whole world uh, listen to music is creating something like that. Mm -hmm. So I forgot what your question was exactly. exactly what your vision part. is. My vision. Yes. Um, so basically in the next five years, probably working on expanding that and getting, you know, some of my ideas out, uh, into, into the world, uh, past five years, I've always been interested in politics. So I really hope you circle back to that. It might be a, like a later on type of thing. I, I probably will end up owning some other businesses myself. Um, uh, and that uh, we could even talk a little bit about how that has uh, seeing you know your experiences has made me realize that I want to have a couple of different businesses. Uh, it helped me realize about myself a lot that um, I don't like I. Music is like my main thing, but I've, I've had a ton of other hobbies and passions and like other little things that I like to do. Um, and I'll probably end up doing the same thing with like different businesses and different um, groups well, or whatever it is. I think it's cool when you get to a place where you can start investing in some of the other businesses. So you mm -hmm. have your, you know, stake in the game and, 100%, yeah. um, and I think the wish man movie for me has been really cool because you know, we, we went to the premiere, um, this past June and seeing Frank, uh, Frank's story told mm -hmm. and being a part of it, but really more from, you know, as an investor, but from the outside and knowing that this, you know, I came in a couple of years ago and invested so they could finish filming, but, um, this story and the telling Frank's story, you know, and how he started, uh, the make a wish foundation, like it's been six or seven years in the making mm -hmm. and we're now just on Netflix um, and on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And it's been really cool because I think it can have such a tremendous impact on other people. Definitely. You know, and yeah, yeah when, once you get kind of the core down, then it gives you the opportunity to play a mm -hmm. little bit more. Yeah, I know. That, that's what I really, what I'm, I'm looking forward to is being able to do that because I have so many ideas and so many different, things that I want to do and want to change, especially uh, even climate change. Um, I would really, really love to be able to like invest in nuclear power and uh, looking into new technologies for creating green energy. Uh, unfortunately, I don't quite have the funds for that, but you're getting there one thing at a time. There. Yeah, exactly. So, but anyways, uh, that's something that I'm really passionate about, especially because we could have like free energy if we, did it right so you know would you not like to get rid of your power bill i don't know um anyways um yeah yeah that's I, another podcast i yeah, think totally different, <laughs> totally different podcast tune in next time for that one um what i love is that you have all these ideas yes yeah and, and it's not about having the right one necessarily or them all coming into fruition it's it's really find in the places where you can make the most contribution. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. So, yeah. 
So. <sighs> Is there anything else? I don't think so. I can say I've had a lot of fun just yeah. hanging out, chatting with you, and I'm glad that we're recording. Um, share with everybody where they can connect with you. Uh, if they you wanted to listen to your music. Twisted Beats. That's what I go by. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Twisted Beats, Facebook, Twisted Beats, everything just Twisted Beats. I think my website is twistedbeats.com. So, okay. yeah, check me out. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you can, like, put links or whatever. Yeah, too. we'll get your links up there, too. Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and Thanks just sharing kind of your, your, I guess, thoughts on growing up entrepreneur style. Yeah. Um, it's been a good experience overall. Yeah. I mean, not that you know any different either, but... I liked it. <laughs> I think it, it definitely gives some unique opportunities. And for those people, as I said in the beginning, just kind of circling back, for those people who are wondering if they're doing the right thing and how it's impacting their kids, um, I think it's great to hear that you've learned so many positive things from it. Definitely. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. As an entrepreneur, do you ever feel isolated, like you're just grinding away and not getting to the place or reaching the goals that you want? Maybe you've realized that you just spent days, weeks, or even months trying to accomplish something only to figure out that the answer that you have would have saved you all of that time. I know I've had that experience and my clients have as well. And that's why I created the Tribe of Leaders Biz School. Get the accountability, the training, and the knowledge base in a community of like-minded people who are there to support you. Go ahead and check it out. It's thetribeofleaders.com.